In the headlines, soldiers kill two bandits in Kaduna State. Worshippers trapped as truck rams into Suleja mocks. Nigerians' unemployment rates to rise to 41% in 2023. And on the international scene, doctors in England start historic four-day strike over pay. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you for joining us and now the news in full. Troops of Operation Forest Sanity on Tuesday said its operatives ambushed and neutralized two bandits in Kaduna State. The acting deputy director, Army Public Relations, One Division, Nigerian Army, Lieutenant Colonel Musa Yahya, confirmed the incident in a statement in the state. Yahya said that following a tip-off from the intelligence sources, troops of Operation Forest Sanity under the one division of Nigerian army ambushed and successfully neutralized two bandits' leaders, capturing arms, ammunition, and other equipment. The statement partly read an earlier intelligence source revealed that a bandit leader named Isia Longwasa um, intended to send his errand boy Yunusa to purchase some arms and ammunition in Kaduna town. Subsequently, the errand boy was trailed and picked up by plain clothes soldiers and later used to lure two of the bandit's leaders to a selected ammunition select, uh, collection point upon their arrival troops who had laid ambush engaged the criminal with superior firepower and neutralized them he said items recovered from the bandits included one motorcycle two ak-47 rifles six ak-47 magazines 250 rounds of 7.62 mm special one power bank two charm vests and the sum of 200,000 naira Members of the Vigilante Group of Nigeria, Nasrawa Egon Command, on Monday evening apprehended six suspected kidnappers who have been terrorizing and tormenting the residents of the state in their hideout. Investigation by our correspondent indicated that the VGN operatives who stormed their hideout at Tudunwaya, Nasrawa Egon local government area of Nasrawa State, also rescued seven kidnapped victims during the raid. Trust TV further learned that after the arrest, the six suspects were taken to the state's police headquarters, Lafia, for further investigation and subsequent prosecution to serve as deterrent to others. Speaking shortly after the arrest of the suspected kidnappers, one of the residents, Bawa Ibrahim, thanked the VGN operatives for their efforts and dodginess towards ensuring peace in the area. When contacted to get the reaction of the Nasrallah State's Police Command on the matter, the Police Public Relations Officer, DSP Ramhan Nansel, simply said, I can't confirm the arrest at this moment because the command is yet to be briefed on the incident. In politics, the federal government has challenged the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, to clarify his position on a leaked audio of the conversation he allegedly had with the founder of Living Faith Church Worldwide, Bishop David Oyedepo. Addressing the media in London, the Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed, said Obi should clarify what he meant by saying the leaked conversation was a fake doctored audio call. Lai Mohammed said the leaked audio had corroborated the position that Obi's electioneering campaign was based on religion and ethnicity. He said this was the first time in the history of Nigeria's election that a politician would come out openly to campaign on grounds of religion and ethnicity. The audio clip, as released by an online newspaper, was an alleged conversation between Obi and the founder of Living Faith Church Worldwide, Bishop David Oyedepo. Now let's take a short break and when we come back, the news continue.
Welcome back to Trust TV News Update. The Executive Committee of the All Progressive Congress in Issei Pian Ward 8 in Owo, Owo local government area of Ondo State, has suspended its chairman, Olayo De Omo Rayewa, over abuse of office and mismanagement. The suspension was contained in a notice signed by 24 ward escos and three local government escos from the ward and addressed to the local government chairman of the party. Omar Rayewa's suspension takes effect from Sunday, April 9th. The ESCO members expressed loss of confidence in Omar Rayewa over his inability to move the party forward. The Financial Secretary Joseph Oladipo moved the motion for the loss of confidence and seconded by the representative of special persons in the ESCO OK Abiodun. Meanwhile, in politics, the All Progressive Congress has opposed Northern senators vying for the Senate presidency. It insisted that any Northerner angling you know, for the leadership of the Senate had no respect for the party's constitution. Party chieftains in the South, South and South East had called for the zoning of the Senate presidency to their regions in the spirit of fairness and to give other geopolitical regions a sense of belonging, you know, in the view of their Muslim Muslim presidential ticket adopted by the party. For so, so far, no fewer than eight senators had indicated an interest in the race. They include, um, they include of course, Senators Jabrin Barrow, Kano Central, Sani Musa, Niger East, Ojikalu, Abia North, and Godswill Akpabio, Akwa Ibom Northwest. Others are Senators Osita Izunaso, Emo West, Peter Ndubuze, Emo North, Abdul Aziz Yari, Zafara West, and Ahmed Lawan, Yobe North, amongst others. Lukman, member APC National Working Committee, called on Yari, Barrow and other northern senators to step down from the race for the office of the Senate president. The APC chieftain made the appeal in a statement issued in Abuja titled Cash and Carry Contest for Leadership of Thent National Assembly. A trailer loaded with powdered milk rammed into a mox at Suleja, Ninja State on Tuesday, leaving at least three persons trapped. The accident occurred around 6 a.m. when many people had left the mox after morning prayers. According to the eyewitnesses, the trailer fell on the back section of the mox where women and children pray. However, three people, including a child, were trapped in the ruins and subsequently sustained injuries. When our reporter visited the scene, sympathizers were seen around the fallen vehicle which blocked part of the ever-busy Biba Road close to the popular Babangida market. The trailer reportedly fell down while trying to negotiate a narrow part of the road blocked by a heap of sand being used for construction of new shops. A resident, Baba Mayungwa, who spoke to our reporter, said three people had been taken to Suleja General Hospital for treatment. He said the accident happened after Subhi early morning prayer and three people had been taken away to hospital, including a child. The Federal Road Safety Corps Ocean Command has said that 14 passengers escaped death in an accident that occurred on Gwangan Ibadan Expressway. The sector command, um, Henry Benemasi, said, that, said this in a statement issued by the command spokesperson, Agnes Ogungwemi, in Oshobu. Benemasi said that the accident occurred at the Orile Owo Junction, a AP Philly Station, 2 km to Sasa Bridge at about 9.31 p.m. on Monday evening. He said that a private Hyundai Jeep with a registration number LND108GL had a hit on collision with another vehicle, an ash-colored Toyota Sequoia with a registration number ABC403HP. The accident occurred due to speeding leading to the loss of control by one of the vehicles. Also, 14 persons were involved without any casualty. 
according to him the coal has been able to clear all great load within the scene of the accident to avoid any form of inconvenience I beg your pardon. The Federal Road Safety Co Ocean states the passenger's death in an accident occurred. Sorry, I beg your pardon. An Ota Magistrate Court in Ogun on Tuesday sentenced a 22 year old point of sale POS operator, Salawuddin Ayomide, to three months imprisonment for stealing 120,000 naira belonging to her employer. The police charged Ayomide, whose address was not provided with theft following her guilty plea. In her ruling, Mrs. A.O. Adeyemi gave the convict an option of 3,000 naira and also ordered her to pay 120,000 naira to complainant um, Nosiru Jayola. Earlier, the prosecution, Inspector E.O. Adara Loye, told the court that the convict committed the offence on February 8th. At about 8 a.m. in Ogba Ayo, Ijoko area of Ota. Adara Loe said that the offense contravened the provisions of Section 390, Subsection 9 of the Criminal Code, Volume 1, Laws of Ogun State, 20, uh, 2006. An area court in Jos on Tuesday sentenced a bus conductor, Suleiman Mohammed, 22, to six months imprisonment for unlawful possession of two knives. The judge, Thomas Adjise, sentenced Mohammed following his guilty plea to possession of dangerous weapon. Adjise also gave the convict an option of a fine of 50,000 naira. The prosecution counsel, Inspector Ibrahim Gokwat, told the court that on February 23rd, um, the police patrol team from the Railway Division Police Station just arrested the convict during a stop and search. Gokwat said that the convict had two knives on him. The police prosecutor said that the offence contravened the provisions of the Plateau Panel uh, Code Law of Northern Nigeria. You're watching news updates on Trust TV. Coming up, we take a look at why reasons your robber bury corpses at home. Details on this and more after the break. Stay with us. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, it's a total volume of more than 30... Return a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe. How secure are they? You can see security men with blood. This is the road leading up to the... Or leading, if you look at England's squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their names. You are not looking at... Documenting the Nigerian story.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update. And here is a recap of our top stories. We brought you soldiers killed two bandits in Kaduna State. And worshippers trapped as truck rams into Suleja Mox. Now moving on to more stories. Global Audit and Tax Advisory Firm KPMG has projected that Nigeria's unemployment rate is expected to rise to 40.6% as compared to 2022's 37.7%. KPMG detailed this forecast in its International Global Economic Outlook Report, H1 2023, on Tuesday, where it stated that unemployment is expected to continue to be a major challenge in 2023 due to the limited investments by the private sector, low industrialization and slower than required economic growth, and consequently the inability of the economy to absorb the 4 to 5 million new entrants into the Nigerian job market every year. The report also revealed in part that there are expectations, expectations, I beg your pardon, for GDP to continue to grow at a relatively slow pace of 3% in 2023, owing to the slowdown in economic activity that typically characterized periods of political uh, transitions in Nigeria. Furthermore, the spillover from an unexpected slowdown in the global economy in 2023 and its trade and financial flow implications are expected to drag on GDP. On the resurgence of major aspects of the economy, it's forecasted that the telecommunications, trade services, as well as an expected recovery in the oil sector on account of measures being taken to tackle security issues in to drive our forecast of 3% growth in 2023. Graves are commonly seen in the front, beside or at the back of ancient houses in typical Yoruba family compounds. Some go to the extent you know, of burying their corpses inside their houses and live comfortably with the dead, a practice attributed to culture. Hamid Oyegbade files the report. Yoruba culture is very rich and engaging even as religion and modality takes its toll on the Yoruba cultural heritage. One of the aspects of Yoruba culture is on the brink of extinction is burial arrangement and rites. In the past, relatives would bury remains of departed relations in the family compound or the house of the deceased. This allows unrestricted access to the dead. Um, Yoruba people bury their parents inside their room or inside their parlor. They can still go there and invoke the spirit of ancestor. Call upon the ancestor to come to their head. When somebody died, people used to people prefer to bury them at home. Simply because if they consult the oracle and the oracle asks them to perform sacrifice to such person so they will go easily to the grave and pray and do whatever necessary the oracle has them to do it's part of our culture because uh, when people die from your compound you have to bury him or her at your family compound but now i don't think our people they are they are not doing it again now however there's a legal twist to this Lawyer Adinito Akinola says the culture of burying corpses at home is punishable under the law. Nigeria, now let's look at it from a legal perspective. Nigeria law forbid the burial of a dead body in residential apartment. Section 246 of the Criminal Act, in the Criminal Code Act, provide that anybody who buries a, a who buries a call in a residential apartment or at a distance, a certain distance, that such a person is guilty of a misdemeanor and is liable to six months imprisonment upon conviction. But of course, because there is a synergy between law and the culture of a people, so it's difficult to enforce such a law. That's why that is it's rare for you to hear that somebody has been convicted for burying his mother or father in his resident apartment. Because by the culture of the people, we revive the dead, we honor the dead, and we still carry the dead as if they are alive. That's why we have to bury them with expensive casket, still bury them in our city room or, or bedroom. And that makes the law very difficult to enforce. But the law is the law, and it is clear. It goes without saying that the law forbidding burial of corpses at home is unenforceable 
due to the impact of culture. The implication is that the decision to bury corpses in the residences is left to individual preferences. Now from the international scene, doctors working in England's public health service on Tuesday launched what has been billed as the most disruptive strike in its history in a dispute over pay and working conditions. The four-day walkout which began at 7 a.m. 0600 GMT follows months of strikes by other public and private sector staff as inflation sparks the UK's worst cost of living crisis in a generation. The action by so-called junior doctors, physicians who are not senior specialists but who may still years of experience comes after a three-day stoppage last month and several strikes by nurses. It threatens to be the most serious walkout yet and lead to the cancellation of hundreds of thousands of appointments. They are demanding a pay rise of 35%, which they say is needed to help make up for more than a decade of salary cuts in real terms. They also argued pandemic backlogs coupled with staff shortages, at, um, which are massively increasing workloads, endangering patients. The government maintains the BMA's request in, is unaffordable as ministries. Uh, ministers try to dampen wage demands across the public sector amid stagnant growth and high inflation. Restrictions on nightlife and meetings were imposed in three major cities in Ethiopia's Amhara region, including the most populous Gondar, in the wake of protests against the dismantling of regional military forces across Ethiopia. According to similar statements issued by municipal authorities of Gondar, Daisy and Debre Birhan, the restrictions are being imposed by the military command post in each city implying that security there is now in the hands of the federal army. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's federal government recently announced that it had begun the process of reassigning members of the military forces that have been gradually built up over the past 15 years by some regional states to the federal army of the police, called uh, the special forces in Ethiopia. These unconstitutional military units were you know, tolerated until now. Incidents have occurred in Amhara, where the special forces are powerful and provided crucial assistance to the federal army during its conflict with the rebel authorities in the Tigray region between late 2020 and late 2022. In all three cities, motorized tricycles are now prohibited from traveling at night and bars and nightclubs must close at 9 p.m. Strikes uh, you know, are also prohibited and all meetings must be reported to the authorities. It is also forbidden to carry a weapon or any object that can be used as a weapon, knife, machete or iron bar in particular to set off firecrackers and fireworks or to wear any military clothing. Members of the special forces are also ordered to assembly in designated areas. In sports, Governor Atiku Bagudu of Kebbi has donated 10 million naira to KB United Football Club and pledged more investments in sports. He stated this in burning Kebbi shortly after Ramadan break fast iftar with players and officials of the club. Bagudu reiterated his commitment towards sustaining support for the development of sports in the state, particularly the game of soccer. Bagudu appreciated the efforts of the club in its recent success in the Nigerian Professional League, NPL, as well as its feat against Zamfara United. He said Kebi was doing very well in beach soccer in the country and the world at large, recalling that beach soccer started like an experiment in the state. Enumerating some achievements of his administration in sports, the governor said that the state government would sponsor some youth to Quara Sports Academy. And lastly, Niger Super 8 football tournament, which was recently unveiled for a Nigerian club, has kicked off fan voting process for clubs to participate in the playoffs scheduled to hold in Oyo this June. The voting, which commenced Monday and closes on Friday, May 12, has elicited excitement by football clubs shortlisted to participate in the tournament. 
Speaking on the voting managing director, Flykite Productions, Jenkins Alumona acknowledged the excitement and commitment shown by shortlisted football clubs and urged them to embark on innovative fan engagement initiatives that will enable them to garner votes from the fans. Alumona also assured the stakeholders that the votes collected by international recognized audit firm Deloitte could be credible. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust TV News Update. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.